Hey, good morning. Welcome to today's episode of Transform. Last week, I talked to you a little bit about the lost coin. I talked to you about how that coin was lost in the house, and yet even though it was lost, it still had the same value. The fact of the matter is, a $100 bill is worth $100 in my pocket, or a $100,000 bill is worth $100 lost in the house somewhere. It still has the same value. The thing is, it cannot fulfill the purpose for which I have it unless it's in my hand. Same thing with God. Same thing with us. He came to seek us. He came to find us. He came to save us. And when he does, and we allow him to do that, then we're in his hand and we can fulfill the purpose for which we created. But here's the thing. We talked about that lost coin. You're not a lost coin. I'm not a lost coin. You cannot be found without one thing to be found. You're not a lost coin. You have to be willing to be found. The fact is, you can keep hiding. You can keep running. You can choose to stay lost. You're not a lost coin. You're a lost person. Lost people can stay lost as long as they want. But as long as they are lost, they will never fulfill purpose and destiny for which God has created them. You see, it takes me and reminds me of the parable of the lost son. You know the story. The son said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. Um, and he wanted his money and he wanted his inheritance. And it was almost like saying, I wished you were dead. And he took that money and he went off to a distant land and he squandered it. And he ended up living with the pigs. And, and he came to his senses. He said, man, the servants in my father's house have it better than I do. I will go back to him. And I will tell him I'm not worthy to be a son. And I'll tell him I sinned against him and I sinned against God. And so he did. And in that moment, he was choosing to be found once again. He was choosing to go home to the father's house. He was choosing, if you will, to be found by the father. The lost son was found the moment he chose to go back to him. And when he gets back to the father and the father runs and the father embraces him, this is what he said to the father. Father, I've sinned against heaven and I've sinned against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Do you hear what he said? What I've done, the actions of my past, the things I've done to shame you, they have deemed me unworthy to be your son. You know what the father said? Well, at this point, he said nothing, but let me tell you something. Fathers don't allow their sons to dictate their own value. Fathers dictate the value of their child. You see, we as fathers... We got a mandate in our life, and that mandate is not to devalue our children. It is to put value in them, to make deposits in them. Fathers deposit into the value of their child with words and actions, words that affirm, words that encourage, words that build up, yes, and also words that discipline. Because why? We are developing their character. We are instilling in them their worth. We are adding value to their life. We do it with our words, words of affirmation, words of affection, simple things like, I love you. Fathers do that. Fathers withdraw sometimes the value from their child. We do it with words and actions, condemning words, criticizing words all the time, criticizing action, action that demonstrates that you're not that significant to me. When we don't invest time into them, we're making a withdrawal that they don't really have much value to us. You see, when a child tries to devalue themselves, fathers don't conspire with them and allow them to degrade and to devalue themselves. You see, that son, he came back broken, ashamed, and guilty. And he stood before the father and he says, I'm not worthy. But see, here's what the father knew. Even in that broken, ashamed, humiliated, and guilty state, that son still had value. He still knew his value. And that's what he does. And in that moment, and in that moment, he stood there broken, ashamed, and guilty. And he said, I'm not worthy to be called your son. He made a statement. This son of mine. You will see that a little bit later on in that scripture. This son of mine. You see, when the son returned, the father didn't allow him to determine his own value. He added value to him again with his words and his actions. The son's coming home. 
What did he do? He ran to him. He embraced him. He got the kiss of the father. And then there were the words of affirmation that came from the father. Get the robe. That was daddy's robe. That was his robe. Get the best robe, he said. You know who had the best robe? Daddy. You know who covered the son with his robe? Daddy. Do you know who said you're worthy to wear this? Daddy. And then he said, oh, get the ring. That was the signet ring. Family business. Authority. He said, get the ring and put it on his finger. And then he said, oh, by the way, get sandals for his feet. Sons don't go barefoot. Get some sandals. His words and his actions now the positive value into the son. And then he said it again. And then he said it. This son of mine. God's not ashamed to call you a son. Isn't that amazing? Even when we come to him broken and guilty and broken and ashamed, even if we've turned our back on him and we come back to him, he's not willing to let us lay in that state where we say we're unworthy. He's not willing to allow us to devalue ourselves. No, through his words and his actions, he will affirm that we're his son and he will be the one to determine the value of not us. So maybe you're watching this today. Maybe you've gone and walked away from him for a while. Maybe you think you have no value. Maybe others have caused you to think that. The fact of the matter is, it's God the Father that determines your worth and determines your value. Listen to what he says and look at his actions. Have a great day.